So you're probably not used to me uh, doing a video on TV. Uh, Over-the-air TV is a very controversial subject, and we all like to get something for free. Of course, I want to let you know there's nothing for free. Those ads that are on TV pay for the service. So you may think you're getting something for free, but you're really not. Let's talk about the new digital standard coming along, ATSC 3.0. Now this standard, like all new fundamental changes, will require new hardware, new software, new way of thinking. We don't even know what this standard is capable of in the real world. Just like we don't know the difference between what our flip phone could do and what these modern smartphones are capable of. That's the best analogy. The flip phone is like watching over-the-air TV. The smartphone is like all the things that ATSC 3 will bring that we can't even conceive of right now. So stand by. I'm not going to get wrapped up with the features. I'm not going to get wrapped up with the services or even the controversy, the FCC, or the rollout. I'm going to talk about the fundamental differences between the two standards, 1.0 and 3.0. One of them is a traditional digital waveform, something that utilizes many digital techniques. The other is a more modern digital waveform called COFDM, Coded Orthogonal Frequency Division Multiplex. You already are using it here in your phone, in your Wi-Fi, and many other standards. So 3.0 brings you this more modern digital waveform. Wait till you see what this waveform can do compared to ATSC 1.0. So ATSC 1.0 Digital is normally pretty well behaved when you have good line of sight to the tower and a strong signal. But if you are at a distance from the tower and you got something like an airport between you and the tower, you get multipath. And this really doesn't matter how good your antenna is or how well aimed the antenna is. You know I'm interested in over the air TV and I've built TV antennas so what am I doing up here on the roof? Yes, I'm up here on my TV antenna farm setup. And I can generally receive about 50 different over-the-air signals, mostly coming from the Boston area here in New England. However, I do find that with ATSC 1.0, which is the digital standard that we use here in North America, that there are times when airplanes go over, or other uh, multipath style events occur where I uh, have to reposition the antenna or I might not get that channel at all until the airplane goes over. Is this considered a fringe area? No, there's some very strong signals here, at least locally, and that's part of the problem. Sometimes the local channels, which are at much higher amplitude than the stations from Boston, can cause some adjacent channel interference and that seems to disturb the ATSC 1.0 digital television that we have. So ATSC basically defines what we have today with digital television. The newer standard ATSC 3.0 is being rolled out and it's in operation on certain channels in certain markets in the United States. There's been a lot of controversy with 3.0 coming along, whether that's something that will actually happen or not. But I can assure you that uh, with the billions that have been spent to develop this standard worldwide, not just here, this standard is going to roll out. What's the difference between digital 1.0 ATSC and digital 3.0 ATSC? So I'm going to give you guys a break and uh, give you the takeaways first so you don't have to watch my boring technical explanations later in the video. So first of all, it's important to understand that ATSC 1 and 3 are both digital waveform standards. It's not like one is analog and one is digital. They're both true digital. ATSC 1.0 uses conventional digital techniques that you might be familiar with already. These are similar to techniques used in 
most wireless systems, SATCOM, and cable TV systems. And these include MPEG encoding, uh, error correction, quadrature amplitude modulation, and other high-level modulations. Up conversion, linear amplification, these are all digital techniques. ATSC 1.0 is capable of providing high definition video quality all the way up to 4K and surround sound with modern compression techniques. Now it might not have started that way, but with modern coders, ATSC 1.0 with its 19.2 megabyte data rate is perfectly capable of handling 4K high definition. However, it was always known that ATSC 1.0 would be a limited lifespan compromised digital transmission waveform. The introduction of a digital standard was a big step forward for the US market. ATSC 1.0 with a simplified digital signature provided market advantages over a true digital standalone system. This included cost-reduced hardware, lowered switchover risks for the broadcasters, backward compatibility to analog, and simplified hardware and software for both the set-top box and the TV manufacturers. So we know that ATSC 1.0 has disadvantages. ATSC 1.0 had a lot of disadvantages because of its waveform. These include compromised performance, indoor performance, range and dropout performance, multipath interference, in-band interference, and adjacent channel interference. All could cause trouble with ATSC 1.0. What does uh, 3.0 promise? 3.0 leverages the European DVB-T advances that have been going on for the last 15 years. This uh, European standard was based on COFDM digital waveforms, coded orthogonal frequency division multiplex. Uh, higher data rates are involved. Uh, you can get extended range uh, from processing gain. And it's a robust multipath and interference system. It allows you to use simpler indoor antennas. Further, ATSC 3.0 is a true single frequency network, an SFN. It allows multiple towers and repeaters to fill in the gaps, all working on the same channel without interference. This is going to be really important in fringe areas and uh, tight urban areas. It's going to get rid of those dead spots that we have with ATSC 1.0. Now ATSC 1.0 had fixed 188-byte MPEG packets, whereas ATSC 3.0 uses IP packets, like your cell phone, like cable. And basically, this can allow all types of uh, interactivity, internet channels, and uh, some niche broadcasting techniques. So we don't even know all the things that uh, 3.0 will bring, but it's a much more flexible standard. So strangely enough, uh, 3.0 advantages have very little to do with the actual picture quality. 1.0 with its data rate is fully capable of high definition TV up to the 4K level. Really, we're talking about the waveform's robustness or its over-the-air signal performance as the major gain with ATSC 3.0. And I'll go all the way back to analog TV in my discussion. We'll start with analog TV. We'll go to uh, the European standard, DVB-T. Uh, then we'll do ATSC 1.0. And finally, ATSC 3.0. This is all about digital TV, why the waveforms are the difference.